What's going on YouTube? So when Alfa Romeo re-entered the US market, they knew that they had to have a product in the competitive SUV market. This is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, the result of that decision, and it has been refreshed for 2024. But in this highly competitive segment, does this have some unique Italian flair? Let's go ahead and find out. Now the first place we gotta start off with for this Stelvio is up here in the front because we do have some changes. Now one of the places that's not really gonna change though is the grill itself. This is the signature Alfa Romeo look. You would expect that they're not gonna make any major changes to this because we have that signature shield shaped grill and these large areas over here on both sides of the grill, which make it look very aggressive as well as very unique. There's really nothing else on the road that has any type of front end design that looks similar to this. Now what's new is going to be over here at our headlights. We have a fully updated uh, unit for 2024. This is gonna mimic the new design that was first introduced with the Tonali model, where we now have fully LED set up with three different distinct sections. So you have these uh, daytime running lights that run through there. Like I said, everything is gonna be LED versus the previous model, which was HID. Now, when it comes to alphas, the distinct grille is also matched with the distinct alloy wheel design, the five hole design you're gonna see across the entire lineup in various different sizes. We actually have the largest size that's available on a Stelvio. These are 21 inch alloy wheels and they're included with this new trim level for 2024, the Competizione, which you'll see badged right up here on the front fender. Now, most models will also come with the red brake calipers as well. And then you'll notice that we have a gloss black trim that's gonna go around the wheel arches as well as the lower parts of the vehicle. And that will be matched up here at our mirrors, which are gonna be fully loaded on today's model. So we do have power fold, auto dimming on the driver's side, blind spot monitoring, and heating. Now here at the side, you're gonna have an overall length of 184.6 inches for the Stelvio, which is a good size for this segment of vehicle. And as far as the design, I think it looks very unique here at the side. Of course, it has a very athletic look. We're also gonna have blacked out window surrounds and blacked out roof rails up top. And the roof itself is also going to be black, which I really like the way it looks up in the front. Now, as far as the rear design is concerned, Alfa Romeo has updated this ever so slightly, um, not in the overall design of it, but they have updated a few elements for the refresh. Now, I do really like the way this looks overall. Once again, it has a very unique Alfa Romeo design, so if you really like that, you're gonna love what you find on the Stelvio. We have an exposure wiper right here, and then if we check out our taillights, these are still going to be full LED taillights, including the brake light, turn signal, and reverse light. Uh, for 2024, we now have a nice clear finish, which I do really like. And then moving down to the lower diffuser, we don't have the Quadrifoglio model, but we still do have a very aggressive diffuser. As you can see, all of this uh, details look really, really good. We're also going to have dual exposed exhaust outlets finished in a nice darkened color. Really like the way that looks. If you do choose the Quadrifoglio, you're going to have quad exhaust to even spice up the design further and as far as tow rating 3,000 pounds and before we go any further I do want to just talk about this paint you've probably been noticing how beautiful it is as we walk through the exterior this is called a moonlight gray and it's Alfa Romeo's first matte paint and I have to say here in person it is absolutely stunning now, as far as the safety systems are concerned, of course, this is a Alfa Romeo, but it's also a family SUV, and you're gonna get three out of your four active safety features as standard equipment on this model, and additionally, you can option on uh, other safety systems via an optional package. But guys, there are tech upgrades on the inside, so let's check those out. But before, if you're new here, we're brothers, and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now it's time to check out the interior, but first we'll take a quick look at the key fob. Alfa Romeo does have a dedicated key fob, so you can see that it does have their branding on it. Uh, you also do have remote start and standard smart entry. Of course, to get inside, like most other models, just reach behind the handle. That's going to unlock the door. And take a look inside of the interior. 
Uh, there's not going to be any huge design changes versus the 2023 model, but there are those tech updates that Mason was mentioning just a second ago. We'll get into that in a minute, but first let's go ahead and talk about interior color and material selections. Um, you're going to have some unique ones on board, especially here with this Competizione. We have this beautiful sports seat. I really love these seats. Nice thick bolsters, uh, nice design as well. We have a lot of stitching details. And then the nicest touch up here at the top is our branding um, kind of embroidered up here into the headrest, which is a nice classy look. This is just going to be available in black, by the way. And as far as the seat controls, these are going to be 14 way power adjusting. You also have memory seats as well. Those are going to be located over there on the door trim and a manual thigh extension. There are some other colors offered, but you'll have to choose different trim levels. But let's go ahead, climb inside. Now when you get inside, you will see a animation come across the gauge cluster, which is something I'm getting ready to talk about. But first, let's look at the overall cabin materials. So we'll start out on our door trim, as always. We do have a nicely padded armrest. It is going to be leather through the center section, genuine aluminum trim, and then a full leather covering across there. As we move to the upper dashboard, all of this will be covered in a leather material with a double stitching detail, genuine aluminum running through the center section, and then we do have some padding down here on the lower areas where our knees will rest. Now to start it up, um, the push button start is going to be located here on the steering wheel, just like all Alpha products. Now, as far as our 2024 interior tech upgrade, that's going to be right here with those gauges. You saw the animation come across the entire thing. This does also have some other tricks. Of course, you have uh, availability of cycling through a lot of different kinds of information, just like any other digital gauge cluster. Also, as you adjust the drive modes, certain elements of the display do update. And overall, this looks quite a bit more sophisticated and high tech versus the analog setup you got in 2023. Now, as far as the steering wheel is concerned, we have a beautiful high performance steering wheel on board. I love this steering wheel, it has a nice thick rim, good bolsters on the side. It is going to be flat bottom as well with the color contrast stitching. The wheel itself is going to be manual tilt and telescoping. And we do also have uh, heating on board as well. Now, turning over here to our storage. Let's open up our center console. As you can see, not too bad in terms of the size of this thing. It's pretty deep. It's not going to be giant, but you don't really expect that in this segment of vehicle. Also, the front section here is going to be dedicated for a wireless phone charging pad that you can just slide in without even opening that up. Up in front of that, you can slide that back and that's going to reveal you two very deep cup holders, but otherwise there's not really any other places besides for this key slot. Um, for you to stick loose objects. Now taking a look at our shifter here, this is an electronic style shifter with the leather wrapping and color contrast stitching. Pull back for drive, bump to the left if you wanna activate a manual shift mode. And then that's where you can start to use these signature and gigantic column mounted paddle shifters. These things are absolutely huge. They're real metal, they sound fantastic, and they're really, really nice to hold. We'll show you that a little bit more later on in our test drive component, of course. And then when we go into reverse, this is going to show you a standard backup camera. Um, we do have parking sensors. Those are going to be visualized over here on the left side. And then you have a very tiny backup camera over there on the right side. Definitely wish that was a little bit bigger and higher resolution. No 360 camera or anything like that either. And then just press the P for park. Your electronic parking brake is located right next to that. Now also in this area, you have this control knob for your display. You have your signature DNA drive mode controller. And then you also have a volume knob, which will control, in this case, a 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. And you do have metal speaker grills built into the door trim. Now, coming over here again, we do have a dual zone automatic climate control setup. Very simple to use. You just have the physical controls. When you make an adjustment, it appears up there in the display. And then in the same area, you have your three-stage heated seats and your heated steering wheel. Just be aware that seat ventilation is not offered on the Stelvio. Now, moving on up here to our display. This is one of the older elements of the interior, and unfortunately, it does remain for 2024. 
Um, they've actually chosen not to update this to the newest system like you get in the Tenali, which is uh, based on Uconnect 5. Um, instead, you retain the older style unit and you also have the 8.8 inch display with the resolution being a little bit crunchier than what you get on the Tenali. As you can see though, you've got a lot of different things that you can use inside of here, including performance gauges, adjustments for driver safety, stuff like that. Just be aware that it's gonna be a little slower performing than some of the most modern systems, of course. And you don't have wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You will have to connect to get both of those systems to work via a USB. Up top here, we've got an auto dimming mirror. Your home link remotes will be built into the visor. And then taking a look at the top, as you can tell, we do have a panoramic sunroof and the front panel does open up. And this is a SUV after all. So let's go ahead and see how practical it is here in the second row of the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Now, I wanna go ahead and start by talking about the legroom figures. We're sitting at 31.9 inches of legroom according to Alfa Romeo. And then you're gonna have about 39 inches of headroom. So the headroom is very good uh, in terms of the segment. It's a lot of space. I'm five foot nine for reference. As you can see, I have no issue with the headroom whatsoever. And I do like the panoramic moonroof everything feel open and airy as far as the legroom figures that's going to be a lot behind the competition in terms of the actual number but you know that's why we do our car confections measurements because we're able to measure i'm five foot nine this seat is adjusted to drew who's five foot eight and the knee space is still about six inches so really i think that measurement must be off just a little bit because it's plenty of space for someone of average size. Also, my feet can slide easily up underneath of the seat, and the seats themselves are going to be relatively comfortable. Now, here in the center, let's go ahead and talk about this. We have standard rear vents. I like that we can point them in any direction. And then as we drop down below that, we have two USB ports for charging. We also have three-stage heated rear seats, which is a nice touch. I just want to point out you do have a little bit of a hump here for the middle seat, but it's not nearly as bad as what you see in the Alfa Romeo Julia. Now here in the center armrest, we do have two cup holders inside. Then let's turn to the door trim. The door trim is going to be nicely appointed. We have leather out in all the upper part, uh, nice aluminum trim through the middle, leather through here, leather on the bottom part, and we do also have quite a bit of door storage down in the very bottom. Now let's also see how much cargo you can bring along with you. So we do have a standard hands-free power tailgate on every Stelvio model. And once that opens up, let's go ahead and talk about the cargo space. We're sitting at about 18 and a half cubic feet behind the second row seats. If we reach up and fold those down, uh, we're going to have... I guess you have to give them a little bit of a push uh, to fold them down. We're going to have 56 and a half cubic feet of space with the seats folded down. So that's a pretty good amount for this segment of vehicle. Compact SUVs don't have a ton of cargo capacity, so that's pretty much in line with what you're going to get on like Mercedes GLC, Audi Q5, those rivals right there. And I do want to point out that the seats do have the ability to fold 40-20-40 split folding, which is something that's a nice premium element. So you can have that center long item and keep four passengers still. Now, as far as other features, we do have a cargo cover up top. I like that we have handles to fold the seats down. And then if we lift up the cargo floor, up underneath of here, uh, we do have a, a tire inflator, but no spare tire on this model. Um, and we may be in Detroit, but I do still want to get that cargo measurement for you. Um, we're sitting at 71 inches of length uh, behind the seat adjusted to Drew. And as far as the width in this cargo area, we are sitting at... 38 or 39 inches wide. So definitely a decent amount of space in this Stelvio model. It's going to be pretty practical for an Italian sports car. All right, so here we are behind the wheel of the updated Stelvio Competizione. Uh, we're getting ready to pull out and give you guys an acceleration. But of course, in our test drive, we're going to cover all the usual assortment of information as well. But let's go ahead and get to it. All right, and there's the 60 miles an hour and a brake test all in one. <laughs> Very nice. So uh, what do we have under the hood of the Stelvio Competizione? Well, this is gonna be the standard engine setup. This is a two liter turbo four cylinder. Um, 
Now, I say standard, but I don't mean weak by any stretch of the imagination. This has 280 horsepower, 306 pound-feet of torque. So this is a very uh, impressive 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder. I'm trying to not stay distracted here. We have a Lamborghini beside us, so oh, nice. I, the car person in me is getting a little distracted here, but um, <laughs> certainly a very impressive two liter turbo four cylinder with this base setup. Um, you'll see it throughout this test drive. It has a lot of torque. The 306 pound feet really pushes you back in your seat. Yeah, very, very healthy. Now this is definitely a good base engine, that's for sure, but if you want the most performance out of your Stelvio, they do offer the Quadrifoglio model, and that's gonna be a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6, very impressive setup there. Ferrari, Ferrari derived as right, well. Right, which right. Obviously and that's makes a, that's what out. I mean by very impressive. Very and uh, it's gonna have 505 horsepower, so absolutely incredible performance from that model. It sounds incredible. But for most of you guys, you're gonna pick this base setup, which is very good. Um, the zero to 60 uh, is pretty also impressive as well. Ah, so I went ahead and switched it into D for our DNA uh, drive mode here, which stands for dynamic, of course. Um, and I think that's a great time for me to talk about the transmission setup. Uh, you have an eight speed ZF sourced automatic with the Stelvio model. Um, the transmission performance is pretty good. I will say though, in the normal drive mode, if you just floor it down, it's gonna be a little bit hesitant to switch gears to actually get you the power that you're wanting. So if you want the best performance, obviously that's gonna be had in the dynamic drive mode and it really livens up the transmission a lot. It makes it quite aggressive for the dynamic mode. Right, and we mentioned this, um, you know, we've been in the, uh, we're up here in Detroit, we're doing the whole lineup of the Alpha products. And one of the things that really is interesting between all the models is the fact that when you start twisting that DNA controller, those drive modes are actually very yeah. distinctly different. It's not like a lot of vehicles where the name changes, the graphics turn red yeah. on the display, and then you can't feel anything that happened. <laughs> In this case, like it actually does feel profoundly different. You're going to notice a lot of changes. So in this um, competition, you're going to have the adaptive dampers, for example. So when you switch that, you're going to notice that everything's going to firm up. Um, it's very, everything's going to be tighter. Your cornering ability is going to go up. You're going to notice the steering. Yeah, definitely sharper. a big difference in the steering. Um, it's not what I would call light in normal mode because obviously this is an Alfa Romeo after all. So um, when you look at some of the, this vehicle's competition, like the Audi Q5 that has extremely light steering, it's definitely going to be firmer even in the normal drive mode than that. But uh, here in dynamic mode, I'd have to say this is one of the best uh, compact luxury SUVs when it comes to the steering setup. It just feels very uh, balanced. It feels very quick quick, responsive, um, so very impressive here. Right, and this has, or continues to have, just really fantastic roots. This is the Giorgio platform. It's shared with the Giulia as well, a you know high-performance sedan, and you don't even have to get up to the Quadrifoglio to feel that that performance DNA is baked into every version of the Stelvio. Yeah, really liking this uh, powertrain setup and just the overall driving dynamics of this Alfa Romeo Stelvio. And I don't want to wait too much longer. I just want to go ahead and say that that is today's slam dunk. That's really the DNA of this vehicle is that sporty characteristic. And that is something that is just so rare in this compact luxury SUV segment, um, especially when you look at a lot of the competition, Audi Q5, Mercedes Benz, GLC. Those vehicles don't really have a ton of sporty character to them. And you're definitely gonna get that here with the Stelvio. Right, it just really stands out with this model. Now, one other thing that stands out, but not in a great way is gonna be today's <laughs> air ball. That's gonna be, uh, this infotainment technology. So they updated the gauge cluster, which that's great. I'm, I'm happy about that, but they didn't go the rest of the way and update the main display. Yeah. Like I mentioned, the Tonali has a new version, which is Uconnect 5. It is much better. You have a higher resolution screen, way better performance, wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. All those things are gonna be missing um, from 
this version with a very tiny kind of crunchy looking display and it just kind of looks out of place in a luxury car yep and just kind of cruising along the road here, I do want to talk about your overall ride quality. I went ahead and switched it back into the normal drive mode. And like Drew said, we do have adaptive dampers with this vehicle. So it does a very good job of making sure that you have that adjustability. Here in the normal mode, it has a very luxurious ride quality. I will say it's still probably going to be on the firmer side for the segment of vehicle. If you're looking for the most luxurious thing in the segment, you probably will want to look elsewhere because you can feel the road imperfection but it's not necessarily in a bad way. I really like the overall ride quality of this vehicle and it does a good job of soaking up the bumps despite the uh, really large 21 inch alloy wheels. Right, I, I think it takes the sharpness out. Yeah. You can feel that they're there, but it takes the sharpness out and that's probably the right balance because this is obviously sportier. So you do want some road feel for sure. Also, I'm gonna talk to you guys, of course, about fuel economy briefly. Um, when you choose the standard model with rear wheel drive, you're going to be setting at 25 combined. Most of everything else comes standard with all wheel drive, so you're going to be looking at 22 city, 28 highway, 24 combined for those models. And then your top end quadrifolio will be 19 combined. Um, and of course, all of them are going to be using premium fuel. And I do kind of want to talk about the cornering just here briefly. Um, we don't have a lot of corners on this drive route. We're driving uh, all three Alfa Romeo uh, products today. So we have a little bit of a brief uh, time slot with it. And I will say the body roll is very well controlled. You can tell directly coming from a Giulia to the Stelvio that this has a little bit more body roll. Uh, but of just course. the fact that I'm saying a little bit more body roll than a Stelvio or a Giulia, excuse me, that's an impressive bit right there because um, the Julia is very, very impressive when it comes to that. And the Stelvio is a lot better than I even thought it was going to be. All right, guys. Speeding up to get the uh, sound level reading. We will yeah, normal get mode. into normal mode and take this reading. 55. 55 miles, well, hold on. 55 miles per hour. Alrighty, we ended up at 57.6 decibels, um, and of course, as always, on carconfections.com is where you can find all the latest sound level readings and compare them to all the competition that this Stelvio goes up against. Um, this is not an official rating in a sense because we are in Michigan, and I do want to point out the roads are very rough here, so uh, I would take... A little off of this compared yeah. to what we would normally get in Kentucky, but, but it's honestly, not a bad... that's not too bad of a reading for a louder Michigan road uh, compared to some of the competition. So I think we're going to have a pretty impressive sound level reading with the Stelvio model uh, compared to some of its rivals. And I just checked the website that would make it the second loudest one we have tested in this segment. But once again, that's probably mostly related to the road. Yeah, and then lastly, I do want to talk about your warranty. It's going to be for your 50,000 miles for both your basic and powertrain warranty. Additionally, Alfa Romeo is giving you one year and 10,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. And let's talk pricing for the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. So for 2024, we're going to start about $45,000 for a Sprint model. Uh, now, all-wheel drive is going to be standard if you choose the uh, TI model or above. The TI is going to be 50825 The Veloce is 52,785 and then you end in this top end model. Uh, this is going to be 58,175 and then when you option on all the different things including this beautiful paint color we're sitting at 59,870. Of course if you choose the Quadrifolio model that's going to be quite a bit more expensive. Now, if you're a smart shopper, the next place you're going to go to is carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now, on there, we have a tool that will connect you with local dealers in your area to get you the best price on your new vehicle. Additionally, that's going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for negotiating with dealerships. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in the video description. 
And guys, that's going to be where we leave off on this in-depth review of the refreshed 2024 Alfa Romeo Stelvio. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you help get us invited to events like this where we can sample out the full line of Alfa Romeo products and show you guys some of the 2024 updates. If you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support. We really appreciate it because you do make this all possible. And if you're not already, we really want to invite you into this family. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.